Lou O'Brien is in our Brisbane studio. Lou, thank you for your time and thank you for joining us. Could I just begin, though, by saying it does appear that you've got some catastrophe fear-mongering elites in your own ranks. <laughs> Thanks, uh, Alan. Thanks for having me on. And, uh, look, uh, one of the great parts about, about being uh, on the back bench, particularly in, uh, in the coalition on my side of... Uh, of the chamber is that I can speak up, and uh, that's what I've done. Uh, what others choose to say is 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 their uh, is their right, but uh, I'm speaking up on behalf of sensible Australians. We just fought an election on on extreme environmental uh, policies of the Labor Party, uh, and we won. The Australian people gave the Labor Party a clear uppercut for their 45% emissions reduction and 50% renewable targets by uh, 2030. Australia has spoken very recently in the most democratic process we have, and this anti-democratic extinction rebellion, or whatever they like to call themselves, can't handle it, and they've decided to chain themselves to lumps of steel and glue themselves to the road, but they've also chosen to put the public at risk, as I said in that email. This is a disgrace. The judiciary needs to meet the expectations of the community when dealing with these people, and I don't think mm. they have yet. Mm. No, they, so what they, should happen? They, what should they happen? really do. I mean, they really do. If you look at the judiciary, it's not just on this issue. There's on so many. They just get out of touch with ordinary community expectations. I mean, the, the distance between some of our judges and the citizenry is, is honestly, is about the distance from here to Mars. What should happen, Lou? Well, I think uh, I think uh, Anastasia, Anastasia Palaszczuk should have. Uh, had these laws in place long before now, I believe the laws are already there. Uh, the, the judiciary needs to apply them. They need to uh, apply appropriate sentences, send a, a clear signal to the community and these foolish people that their actions won't be tolerated. Actually paint the picture of what can happen when they disrupt society like they're doing. Those things that I said in that email... I've been at accidents where the minutes have been turned into hours, where people are hanging on by a thread and we're praying for the ambulance to get there just to, to, to keep them going and to save their life. Mm. Now, if there was a, uh, an activist that uh, uh, you know, has lived a charmed life and decided to uh, get in the way of that ambulance, what would that do? How, mm. how would that, that person's family feel? This is what we need to impress upon society. I, I should, this, mm. is, uh, this is a lot more dangerous than what they're, 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 uh, they're putting out there. I, I should say to our viewers that Lou O'Brien in a past life was a policeman, so he knows this scene backwards. Just to put our viewers in the picture, because those pictures you've seen there are fairly dramatic, but nonetheless, yesterday in Brisbane, a 49-year-old man climbed over the Story Bridge, dangling in a harness, and at 8am... A vehicle drove along George Street, Brisbane. It dropped barrels filled with concrete at the intersection of Anne and George Streets. Two protesters allegedly locked themselves onto one barrel and a third protester locked himself onto another. Then a boat trailer blocked the roadway between George Street, Turbot Street and Anne Street with five protesters locking themselves to the boat traders and one of the ringleaders in this bloke called Eric Herbert was arrested during the protest on Monday. He'd breached his bail conditions. But, but Lou, I mean, the bloke was given 40 hours community service and he'd been charged, I think, five or six times previously. 40 hours community service. Well, uh, it's, it's just not enough. This, this fellow with his 40 hours community service, we should get him to walk up the Bruce Highway and start picking up rubbish. And finally, actually, we'll be doing something good for the environment. But he won't do that and he probably won't turn up, up to the, the community service. Uh, you know, the fellow hanging from the bridge, at least he wasn't blocking a road, but a, a Stanley knife would fix that pretty quick. Just cut him off. It, it's, this is out, out of control. It's absolutely out of control. I mean, what do you do to them, though? I mean, yeah, yeah. If, you, if you look at the, the crowded jails we have... Uh, every time there's a protest, you can arrest another 50. But where are we going to put them? Look, I, I don't wear that. I think there's plenty... <laughs> the, the jails in Queensland aren't that crowded. Uh, these people need to hit the tin. And I tell you what, they won't be recidivist offenders if they do because they all come from fairly wealthy families. They, uh, they don't really know hardship. 
Uh, that's why they're actually sitting out on the road acting like spoiled brats, mm. because that's what they are. They are the spoiled well, back end of society. Well, why can't we put a, a yellow vest on them, identify them for who they are and get them out to clean gutters and clean up the streets and remove graffiti? There's lots of community tasks they could do. I mean, Lou, you've made some comments, I know, about uh, welfare in relation to this. Now, many people have written to me say, well, these people aren't working. There's an obligation if you're going to take work that you're going to take welfare that you've got to be looking for work. Why should these people continue to get welfare? Shouldn't we be photographing these people, finding out who they are and removing the welfare entitlement? Absolutely. Look, if these people are, are on New Start and supposed to be looking for a job, well, they've got an obligation to do that. And they should be out looking for a job and they shouldn't be trying to stop the society, the very economy that is paying them that money, the very, the very industries that are the royalties uh, that are coming from are paying their welfare. Now, they don't deserve it. And if they're on a disability pension, well, guess what? They've just proven that they shouldn't be and they should be in work and mm. out doing some manual labour. But yeah, don't they have a right to protest? Surely they have yeah, a they right. Have. They no must have a right. No one's arguing and that. Well, Look, I, th absolutely. I, I think absolutely. if you follow this Lou's argument, he is a... He no, is no, no, Lou is that. saying you're right to protest, but he's saying if you protest in this way, you're breaking the law. Well, how are you That's supposed to saying. protest? Well, you can march, you can walk, you don't... No, if you march, you're, the you're marching on the streets. You can have an organised protest. The way Come on, you don't Look, carry a bloody concrete the... truck down the street with you and dump it on the street. God, help me. Give me a break, Richard. What are you doing? Being, being, a, being an old union man, I thought you'd be uh, up, to, up to date with uh, how unions protest. They get permits, they, they do it in an orderly fashion and the, the emergency services have alternative routes if there is an emergency. These people are doing it to maximise uh, the negative effect on the population. They are trying to disrupt tax-paying Australians and they shouldn't be doing it. They well, should be punished. See, this program goes to go New Zealand. they should go and try and do it. Yeah, our program goes to New Zealand. Now, in, uh, in Wellington... Protesters super glued their hands to the inside of a bank window. And what do we say? That's okay, do we, Graham? That's terrific. No, I don't say it's okay. Oh, it's a protest? I don't say it's okay. If that's a protest, you say it's okay a, to protest? They have a right to protest. How far you take that That sort that of right protest is another, super, is another matter. They super glued themselves to the, to the banister in the chamber not so long ago, in the Parliament of Australia. They stopped us from uh, performing... Uh, our democratic process, these people don't care about Australia. They just care about their crazy ideological beliefs. But you see, our problem is the system, and you are right here, Graham, about judges and magistrates. I mean, there were 36 vegan activists in April this year in Melbourne. They completely dislocated Melbourne traffic at the ridiculous hour of the morning. They were each fined $100, Lou, 100 bucks. I mean, how we're just saying they'll be back. Keep going. They'll be back. Yeah, they'll be back. The, there, that it, there is no deterrent effect there. They okay. need to hit the tin. Okay, they now, need Lou, to go to jail. Let me ask you the question that we began with. All right, this has gone on all over Australia. The people out there are outraged that this can be allowed to happen. Can you name me a political leader apart from Anastasia Palaszczuk, who today has had anything to say about this? Well, look, I, I, I can't. I can't. But what our political leaders need to do is to introduce legislation like we recently did at a Commonwealth level to do with those vegan activists that were invading people's farms. And we meet, need to make it an offence for organisations like Extinction Rebellion to be able to peddle their rubbish and organise their illegal activities online. We can do that as a Commonwealth and that's what I think we should be doing. Just one quick one before you go, which is totally unrelated to any of this, but I wouldn't miss the chance of having this man here. He has been fighting for defence personnel, war heroes, and basically, to, to sum it up very simply, uh, they, would, they were recognised that when they left their defence force service, they were entitled to an entire down the track, but they wanted to borrow from a future benefit, to put it simply, and they did. They were entitled to believe that when they'd paid off that benefit, in other words, they got less benefit oh. because they'd borrowed against it, they, when they paid off the benefit, they'd get their full entitlement at age 72. Now, there are over 50,000 of these people who've paid off the full benefit, Lou O'Brien, and they are still being denied their full entitlement. 
So basically, the government of Australia is robbing these war heroes and defence personnel. You've approached everybody, Darren Chester, the Minister. Just before you go, have you got anywhere or is the problem still there? Well, it's in the hands of the Commonwealth Om Ombudsman at the moment and uh, an inquiry is uh, occurring. I'm still speaking closely with the veterans community. Uh, if it's not resolved there, the fight continues on because we cannot have government profiteering from our, our heroes. Now, look, I've said this repeatedly, and, and it's, it's a culture that's developed where, where the department sees itself as, in some respects, the enemy mm. of, of returned servicemen. Mm. They see themselves as the people who must push them down who must fight their, their uh, 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 yeah, attempts to get people. benefits. They're difficult people. And they suppress them. Well, That's where it's wrong. It's the yeah. culture within the department. It's an issue we need to come back to because we've run out of time. But, Lou, it's great to talk to you and you keep up the fight on both fronts and we'll be keeping in touch with you. We're grateful for your time.